All right, well, welcome back to another video, and I'm just gonna address it right off the bat. No, this video wasn't clickbait. Yesterday, trailered the boat up, drove about an hour to the boat ramp. I was dropping the boat in the water, and when I turned the key over, there was a very, very weak turnover. So the boat didn't start, and here we are at the house. However, I do know what happened. I haven't been trickle charging the boat. It was my fault, got home, plugged the boat in on the charger, and after a couple hours, it started back up. Still a bummer though, because yesterday I was super excited to film. I had an absolute banger of a video planned if everything went to plan, so that's what's going on. I'm just gonna pull the boat up again right now and put it back on the trickle charge so it can have a full battery next time we go out. Now I was gonna try and go out again today, but the wind is absolutely gusting out there and the seas are pretty rough. We were gonna go out to the end of the jetty and hopefully catch a few more monsters, but that's not gonna happen, it looks like. So today, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how I hook up the battery and charge it. And then we're gonna go do a tank update. If you guys watched my tank, video I think a couple weeks ago we got a 50 gallon aquarium i got some fish in there i'm gonna go show you guys and we're gonna do a little feeding session in there to wrap things up we're gonna go cook that flounder i caught with rx angler i was gonna eat it right away but i had a super long day long drive back after that so I'm not too sure if i'm gonna try the sashimi since it is a day old and i like to eat fish i mean if i'm gonna eat the fish raw it's gonna be right away so i don't know we're gonna pull it out and clean it up and see what we're working with. But it's definitely gonna be good if we cook it. I just, I don't know, it's a day older. So we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna pull my truck up, get this thing on the charger, and then we're gonna go feed some fish. So here we have our power switch right there and then our battery is right in here. So I've already unstrapped it. It's in a box in here to keep it dry. And I got our charging box right here. We're gonna plug in the power, turn it on, put this onto the extension cord and it should trickle charge. All right, good to go. All right, so a quick update with the tank here. I have made one addition. We put in a catfish Fisher brought over here and he absolutely wrecked havoc in the tank. Knocked everything over. All of the decor is on one side now and it definitely doesn't look anything like it did when we put it together. But we do need to add some water in here. That sun is really evaporating this tank quick and there's some algae. I put up some boards here, but they blew over with the gusting wind. Um, so we're probably going to have to scrape some algae off, add some water, and then, of course, feed the fish. But first, I want to show you guys this catfish. So he's kind of made himself a little fortress in there. I had all of this decor spread out, but, you know, catfish do what catfish do. So here's a turtle. Look at this guy. Let's see if he's hungry. Another thing to note I'm just realizing now is I had a bunch of guppies or mollies when you guys corrected me. I think they are mollies uh, or were mollies. I'm not seeing them right now. I see one, two, three, four, five fish in there. I had a total of like nine or ten, four or five being guppies, and I don't see any of them. So they could have jumped out. I'm about to look, but I think the fish ate them. So. I kind of expected that. I didn't feed the fish for a couple of days and there's a very hungry turtle in there, very hungry catfish. And I don't think the tilapia messed with them, but I think uh, the turtle definitely had something to do with it. I don't see any mollies or guppies here or here. All right, so I guess they ate them all, which is fine. Doesn't matter to me. It's just an extra food source in there if they do get hungry. It's kind of messed up, but. <laughs> 
it's the way nature works. So we got the turtle, the tetra, tilapia one, tilapia two, and oh wait. We got, yeah, a turtle, a tetra, a tilapia, a cichlid, and two more tilapia over there. So it's time to feed them. Yes, my fish are cannibals. Look at that turtle. He sees that food, he wants it. Filter is back up and running smoothly. We do have quite a bit of algae here. I'll have to clean that up afterwards. I'm not gonna do it in the video. But you can definitely see that sun is taking its toll. All right, so this turtle here, he is, he's picking the pellets up off the bottom here. I think he is hungry. Let's get to the fun part. Let's see if the turtle likes speckled trout. Hey, come here. He got it, look at him. Oh, you like that, huh? It's gonna make you grow big, dude. Tons of protein in that meat. I think he wants some more. This turtle, I, I swear, never gets full. Always wants more. I also wanna see if the other fish like it. I, I know the catfish for sure will eat it. The question is, will the turtle take it before he can eat it? Tilapia seems to be picking at it. All right. I bled it out whenever I caught the fish, so it should be good in that regard. We just gotta clean it up and give it a try. Like I said, it is a day old, so I'm gonna see about doing the sashimi. I'm not sure yet, um, but it should be good cooked either way. So I actually practically have no experience filleting flounder, but they have like two massive fillets on the front side and like a kind of a small one on the other side. Being that I don't have any experience, this might look a little janky. Whenever we were fishing for them, these things were like doing cartwheels when they were jumping out of the water. You'd see their white belly just come up and just somersault. Super cool. If you guys haven't watched that video, make sure you go check it out. It was a super fun day. We went up north to the Galveston area and put the smack down. Well, Nick, our ex angler, put the smack down on the flounder. I only got two. Look at the difference in color there. Super white. And then this one is just kind of like a grayish, transparent white. This is like a pinkish, yellowy. Now I'm gonna probably try half of one of these fillets for sashimi, but I do want to get them cooled down first, like I said, and then we'll cook another side with a recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in the bag. This is the good piece I want to try for sashimi. I'm gonna put it in the fridge, let it cool down. And then I'm actually gonna cook these. I changed my mind. I'm gonna cook these right now while this is in the fridge. All right, so basically the game plan is to go in the fridge and find whatever I can get that I think would go with the fish and basically put it all together and cook it up. So we're gonna pull the fish out, put it in a pan, throw some olive oil in there and really just whip something up with what I got. So I didn't really make any prior preparations for this cooking. So we're gonna have to work with what we got, but I think we'll have some good stuff. Now I left the skin on the belly meat. We're just gonna pick that off after we cook it. I figured if I skinned it, the piece is gonna be so thin it probably won't be worth even cooking. We're gonna put some on top of the fish. Well, I guess we, we're gonna douse the fish. All right, to start it off, we're gonna do what you gotta do every time you cook fish. Sprinkle a good layer of pepper on the fillets as well as some salt. Salt also kind of pulls out some of that moisture that's left in the filet, which will make it taste a little bit better once you cook it. So to start, we got a good old bell pepper in there. Got some tomato naters, got some onion, and then there's a jalapeno that I'm not gonna put on there. I, I'm not a jalapeno guy. And then we got some green
All right, so now that we got our little breading toppings mixture in here, we added a little bit of olive oil in there to make it a little bit stickier and add that flavor as it does go really well with fish. So now I'm just gonna put it over the fish, kind of coat it over the top, and we're gonna stick it in the oven and cook it. All right, there we go. Look at that. That looks absolutely amazing. 12 minutes in the oven coming out. Fish looks flaky white and look at that olive oil bubbling. All right, so the fish is cooking. It's got a couple more minutes and this fish has cooled down quite a bit. So I'm gonna cut off a few slivers and give it a dip into a soy and see how it goes. I've never eaten flounder raw before, so never even thought about it, never considered it. But we're gonna give it a shot here. I'm gonna wipe it down one more time. It doesn't have any smell, which is good. I am gonna cut off this little, here we go, completely raw and authentic. Oh my gosh. Dude, what the heck? I cannot believe I've never eaten flounder sashimi before. Oh my gosh, the soy sauce, that makes all the difference. Adds that amazing flavor. Dude, that is so good. And I'm telling you right now, I don't get many opportunities to get like Wahoo, tuna or triple tail, which make amazing sashimi raw. But that right there is, oh my God, that's absolutely amazing. The flesh doesn't really have any flavor. So when you dip it in the soy sauce, it's just that amazing sashimi flavor. That soy sauce just soaks right in. I'm telling you right now, we will go catch or get more flounder because I always crave sashimi, but I just, I never have tuna or wahoo triple tail, but little did I know, flounder is pretty damn good too. So thank you, Nick, for the suggestion. I would have never thought about that. I always cook inshore fish. So definitely we'll be doing this a lot in the future. That is the sashimi. Next, we gotta try the, the cooked fish. And I'm just gonna do a quick taste test here, make it brief, just give you guys my impression. All right, so here we go. That's the piece of cooked fish. We got a little bit of everything on there. We got some of the breadcrumbs, uh, onion, tomato. We got, we got it all on here. Mmm! Just that added topping salsa I made with the breadcrumbs, the tomato. Just adds that little touch that is so good. But, you know, I get to eat cooked fish a lot. Do I get to eat raw fish a lot? Well, hopefully I do now. Overall, both are really good. I don't know if I'm ever gonna cook another flounder after eating this. So that is gonna wrap up the video. I was absolutely blown away by this flounder. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you wanna see more tank video updates in the description box below. Give me some ideas because I don't really know what to do with the tank aside to show you guys new fish or what the fish are doing. Today we lost like four or five fish. I just found out that we lost quite a bit of fish, but like I said, I expected those little mollies or guppies to get absolutely slaughtered. So it's all good. Boat's ready to rock and roll. So hopefully we'll be able to head out soon. The wind is gonna be absolutely ripping for I believe like the next four or five days. So we're gonna see, so we're gonna have to figure something out here. Let me some suggestions down below on what we should do. But once again, hope you guys liked the video. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe down below if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And I'll catch you guys next time.